And everybody in this room here today are all stars as they led this effort to the goal line. So um, this is, again, the uniformity and integrity in elections bill. It started out really, I will say, in the House, but with the hard work of the Senate and the governor, who I'm going to mention in a minute. Um, it started off back in 2020 when we went through the um, lawsuits involving our elections for 2020. And what became clear to me during that time was that even though South Carolina did a good job with elections, that there were actually 46 election commissions that at times were operating in a different way. And although that did not have consequences for the state of South Carolina, down the road it could certainly be the recipe for disaster in this state. Uh, we would go to hearings and have different counties say that yes, we do signature verification, or no, we don't do signature verification, or yes, we do a right to cure, or no, we don't do a right to cure. So one of the, one of the main thrust of this bill is to make sure that every county election commission was doing things in the exact same way. A vote in Darlington County should count just the same as a vote in York County, just the same as a vote in Charleston County, just the same as a vote in Richland County. So that was kind of part one of the bill, the uniformity part, that was House Bill 3444. Um, then the House passed the omnibus election bill, House Bill 4919, which we also sent to the Senate. And the crux of that bill is we wanted in South Carolina to make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. So we eliminated in-person absentee voting. We replaced it for the first time with early voting without excuse so individuals can go and vote in that 12-day window leading up to elections without having to make up an excuse. We want all South Carolinians to have the opportunity to do that. Eliminate drop boxes, auditing, eliminating third-party funding of election, voter roll maintenance, no ballot harvesting, identification requirements for mail-in absentee voting. All of those things were included. But I think it's important for me to tell the entire story of House Bill 4919. As I introduced it, it was a skeleton bill. It dealt with early voting. It dealt with absentee voting. It dealt with voting centers. And with the work of the members of the House and the members of the Senate and the governor and the political party leadership in our state, this bill grew as more and more important areas were discovered about our election law and some changes we made, some areas we made better. But again, we wanted to go back to the fact that we wanted to make it easier to vote and harder to cheat in South Carolina. Again, these significant changes will protect the integrity of our elections here in South Carolina. This bill, I believe, will put us in the top three states with regard to voting integrity. So I want to thank the members of the House, our Speaker, Merle Smith, our Ways and Means Chairman, Chairman Simmerl, all the House members today. I want to thank the Senators also, Senator Campson, Senator Kimbrell. Those individuals were absolutely outstanding and helped us craft this compromise. I'm going to talk about the governor's role in a minute, but um, you would hear as we would go back and forth between the House and the Senate, the bill's dead. We're not going to get a bill. I can tell you that knowing these individuals in the Senate and knowing how hard our governor pulled on this issue, that there was no chance we weren't going to get a bill to reform elections in South Carolina and do it in the right way. Do it in the way that people want to come to South Carolina, to keep the all-star game here. Because we, again, had an all-star cast. Most of them are behind me. Some of them are out front um, who had a hand in this bill. So I'm very proud of this day, very proud to have sponsored these two bills. And without further ado, I will introduce it. I will do, introduce you to my very, very good friend who is one of the most knowledgeable people in elections in South Carolina, Senator Chip Campson. Senator Campson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I still call you that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. <laughs> um, we passed perhaps the strongest election reform bill 
in the nation. Um, in fact, the Foundation for Government Accountability has just issued an opinion that it is the strongest election reform bill in the nation. And the speaker is right, this bill was never in jeopardy of not passing. What was going on is the normal give and take of the legislative process. As you all know, in their wisdom, the framers diffused political power and did not concentrate it. And particularly in the legislative branch, because they were concerned that the legislative branch would be the most powerful, they diffused it further between the House and the Senate. Um, and so it was your typical give and take, some people call it sausage making, um, but your give and take process of the House and the Senate laying out markers, determining where we're going to resolve. And of course, the governor has to be involved as well, because at the end of the day, he needs to sign it into law and, and not veto it. And, um, but the bill was really never in any jeopardy of not passing. It didn't need to be saved. We knew we were going to get it passed. There was a commitment on both sides of the aisle to do that, um, and both chambers. Um, and what the bill does is it safeguards voter fraud primarily where it occurs, which is in absentee ballots. That's where the, the, the Jimmy Carter, James Baker Commission in 2006 drew that conclusion. Um, Justice Alito, in several opinions, has made that same point, and that's what we did. We focused on providing security measures in the paper absentee ballot process. It also holds the Election Commission accountable to administer and defend our election laws. We realize that that wasn't quite going on the way it should have been in the 2020 election. And of course, it authorizes two weeks of early voting, and it unanimously passed both the House and the Senate. Um, that is quite an accomplishment for an election reform, election integrity bill to have Republicans and Democrats, the House and the Senate, all unanimously agree to pass it into law. But that's really the way we do it in South Carolina. And it really makes me proud to be a South Carolinian because we worked across the aisle, we worked with both chambers, we worked with the executive branch governor, and, and we produced a result that will ensure the integrity and the, and the veracity of elections on into the future and it's something that we all can be proud of. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say I appreciate the work. At times we have little, 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 little disagreements, but we always end up working it out when it comes to the big issues. And, and, and Governor, the same thing with you. And so it was a great pleasure working with you all on this. South Carolina is a much better place because we pass this into law. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Camps, and also thank all of y'all for being here today. Um, my name is Representative Brandon Newton from Lancaster County, and I had the honor of helping shepherd this bill through the House. Uh, first off, I want to thank um, the people along the way. So this was a two-year journey in the House. We began working on this last year and had hours of testimony on this bill. Um, I want to first thank Speaker Lucas, uh, Chairman Jordan of the subcommittee, and, and Chairman Murphy of the Judiciary Committee for giving us the time to work this through. It matters when you can do the work on the front end before you just put a bill on the on the floor and run with it, and I think we did a great job of doing that. Also, I want to thank the Senate and the Governor for their work during this. This is a truly a model of how you can do important legislation in a timely and also effective way. Uh, this bill does a couple things I want to brag on. First, it modernizes our system. South Carolina was one of less than 10 states that allowed no excuse in-person early voting. We are now no longer on that list, and it's important. I don't think anybody has a disagreement. If you want to show up and vote and show that photo ID in person, you should be allowed to vote early. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. We now do it. We also now will allow our voter offices to have more time to count the absentee ballots. Instead of forcing them to do that entire process starting at 9 a.m. on Election Day, and they have a whole other day to do the outer envelope process, and then starting at 7 a.m. on Election Day, they can do the inner ballot uh, process. Why is that important? That means that we're not going to be counting ballots in South Carolina for days upon days after Election Day. This will allow the vast majority of our ballots to be counted before the polls close at 7 o'clock. We don't want to be like states around the country that took six or seven days to count their ballots. 
and this bill safeguards that. Secondly, it makes sure our elections are safe and secure. We're going to have elections that are secure with these changes we've made to absentee voting, and they're also going to be um, safe for all our voters to know that it's not on them to fun come up with an excuse to vote early. Um, that is a huge burden. Sometimes we forget about, imagine the guy that works a 12-hour shift. He may have only a 30-minute window on election day to vote, or his vote doesn't count. We're now going to give that person two weeks, including Saturdays, to vote early. That is a huge step forward for working people in South Carolina to make sure their vote is cast and cast in a safe way. I also want to thank a lot of the people who helped during this process, the citizens groups um, that came and testified, and also I want to thank um, the State Election Commission and Howie Knapp. Uh, Howie's a wonderful director and is doing a great job and was able to give us a lot of great guidance during this process. SCARE, the county election official organization, um, they have the worst acronym in state government, but <laughs> they, they truly did a great job helping us during this. Uh, a lot of these points are things they were, they've been fighting for for years, um, and that's why it was important for us to take our time on this, to make sure this is a bill that's not only one we want, but one that can be implemented by our county election officials. Don't forget that in the vast majority of these counties, you have two people running these offices, um, or, or sometimes even less than that. So it's so important that we make sure this system can work for them. They were integral to this process, and I want to thank them as well. Uh, and also, uh, a challenge to the general public, I'm going to say, one, please take part in the early voting process. Everyone that votes early is one less person in line on election day. So you help that person who's voting on election day. I don't know about my friends behind me, but I plan on being there when the polls open um, on May 31st for early voting for our primary, and I want to be one of the first South Carolinians to be casting an early vote. I hope you join me in doing that, and make sure you support your local election commissions. I'm sure they're looking for poll workers, so feel free to call your office and make sure you help them. With that, I want to thank all of our colleagues here for making this important bill and this long journey happen, so thank you all very much. Well, good afternoon. Good to be with you. Let's clarify what Representative Newton means is vote early, just don't vote often. <laughs> so I'm Senator Josh Kimmel from Spartanburg, and it's good to be with you here today on a day that a lot of folks thought maybe wouldn't happen, but we're certainly glad that it did, because nothing's more important than the integrity of our elections. I've heard it said that participating in an American election is a lot like participating in a group project in college. When you turn in the project, you wait for the results, you know you did your part right. You're just hoping everybody else didn't screw it up. And what we did here in this bill is ensure that it's harder to screw up elections in South Carolina. You know, I've heard many times that regulations and laws are written in, in blood and bad things that happen, right? A lot of times you have to react to what happened in, the, in prior moments. And we did have secure elections in South Carolina in 2020. There's no question about that. We did. We had secure elections, but it's not because some folks didn't try to do some bad things. And of course, we had folks in the House and the Senate and the governor's office having to file lawsuits, go to court, and ensure that we didn't have ballot harvesting or drop boxes. That we had to make sure that those elections were safe. What this bill essentially does is take the hard, earned, the hard learned lessons of 2020 and codify them into statute, into law. That the next election is safe and secure and it's harder for us to have these crazy kind of things that were starting to happen two years ago happen again. It ensures that this is, as you've already heard today, the safest place in the country to vote legally and even vote early but the hardest place in the country to cheat, lie, and steal so that people have confidence when they go and cast that ballot that it's being counted one vote for one person. I want to applaud Speaker Lucas and House leadership for working tirelessly to the end and Senator Campson and my colleagues in the Senate for continuing to fight to get this done. You know, we ultimately had a compromise that preserved the notion of advice and consent to the Senate while also sharing power with the House and ensuring that we have checks and balances between the legislature and the governor in a spirit that our founders would appreciate and is really laid out in the Federalist Papers that they penned. And it's amazing, as we've already heard today, that when you can have the House, when you can have the Democrats and the Republicans and the House and the Senate all agree on something, to quote Governor Master's predecessor, it's a great day in South Carolina. <laughs> so great to be with you. Thanks for all everyone here did to make this day a reality. And thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. I am a fish out of water here today, Mr. Speaker, uh, as chairman of the Democratic Party. Uh, the lawsuits that uh, Speaker Lucas referenced, I was a part of. 
Um, matter, matter of fact, <laughs> can't say that won't continue. Uh, but the fact is, is that this is one of the cleanest bills to come out of this General Assembly. And it was a bill that was born out of a lot of hard work, love, but most importantly, respect for our democracy. And I can say this as chairman of the Democratic Party, uh, I will probably catch hell for being here today, but this bill sent a clear message to those who will be reviewing our process or our role in nominating the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. And one of the keys is access to the ballot. And allowing us two weeks of early vote sends a clear message that South Carolina wants to continue to make sure that our elections are run above board, above and beyond reproach, but most importantly, they're run effectively and efficiently. And while no bill is perfect, this is a heck of a very good start. And I want to say thank you to the speaker, to the members of the legislature, governor, thank you. He did offer to let me sit in the big seat downstairs, <laughs> and I'm going to take him up on that. We're going to, we're going to tweet pictures of us doing so. But at the end of the day, this bill represents a group of people, Democrats and Republicans, coming together to work for what is right and for the best interest to preserve our democracy. And I want to say thank you very much. Well, good afternoon. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank all these folks behind us in the legislature who did so much to make this happen. Uh, I'm Drew McKissick, State Chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party. Uh, you know, a lot's been said about the details that are in the bill, but, you know, the course of how we got here. You know, we saw the things that we saw in 2020, and, you know, we were thankful that we lived in South Carolina, and that we don't live in a lot of those other states where either they can't count or they can't follow the law or they can't read, seemingly, or whatever it may be. Uh, we got it right here in South Carolina, unlike a lot of other places. But it doesn't mean, obviously, that uh, the laws that we have were perfect. There's always room for improvement. And I was able, as a member of the RNC's Election Integrity Commission, looking at the various states around the country in 2020, their laws and their processes and what went right and what went wrong and what can be improved and so forth. And we put together an agenda. Uh, and here in South Carolina, our State Republican Party Executive Committee passed a unanimous resolution with the things that we would like to see go into election law improvements here in South Carolina. And I'm happy to say, as a result, that I think of about 20 things, I believe it was, that we had on our wish list, Mr. Speaker, 18 of them are in this bill right now. Uh, and as someone has alluded to just a minute ago, uh, and it's now been rated, I believe, by two different organizations already, two different third-party groups nationally, looking at what's in this bill, it is the largest, most comprehensive piece of election integrity legislation in the country passed by any state on the books, giving us the most secure elections in the entire country. So, so with that, though, I want to say thank you again to the folks in the legislature who worked with us uh, to help get us get these things into this bill, but also all the folks within the party and the activists around the state. Those of you who did so much, not only looking at things in your own county and giving feedback to the committee and the committee hearings, uh, calling and talking with legislators and letting them know our concerns, sincerely appreciate it. Y'all made all this possible and give yourselves a round of applause for getting this legislation passed. Thank you. I had the great honor of, of introducing our governor. Before I do that, I, I left two things unsaid. Um, um, Trav Robertson, um, Thank you for no longer being able to sue me. <laughs> um, when you want to sue us now, the, um, the big fella in the plaid sport coat, <laughs> that's the guy you can hand the papers to also. The other thing I, I neglected to say is again, this bill grew and grew and it grew because what happened in the House and the Senate and the tremendous amount of testimony that was taken and I, I didn't give do recognition to Chairman Murphy, who's over our Judiciary Committee, and Jay Jordan, who listened to hours and hours and hours of testimony, and the bill got better because people in the public who cared about elections, who understood that if you undermine confidence in government, you will undermine confidence in our state, who understood that their voices need to be heard, and yes, it was a lot of testimony, but Chairman Murphy and Chairman Jordan did an outstanding job taking that. Um, normally when I introduce 
Governor McMaster, I talk about the tremendous economic successes in our state, the fact that our state didn't close down, it continued to work, the fact that GDP grew in South Carolina over the COVID years, the fact that he's pushed for a tax cut this year. We are now 43rd in America in least taxes paid per capita. He wanted that to be more. So he got with the Senate and he got with the House earlier and he has been outstanding on economic issues. Mr. Simla and I have, have been here a long time and worked under a number of governors. And I can tell you that I have worked under no better governor than Henry McMaster, a man, an individual who will bring people together to work out the difficult problems, which is what he did in this case. And I agree with my friend, Senator Campson, we were going to get a bill. There was no doubt about that. But Henry McMaster, not only asking that this be included in the bill, and I think this may be a good idea, you know, that's a role that, that, that he gladly takes up, but pulling the House and bringing the House and the Senate together and continuing to meet to work out the small differences that we had in this bill. I can tell you that our governor made all the difference in the world to us having election integrity in our state. And it is my honor, and maybe governor for the last time, um, to introduce a very good friend, a very great leader, and I think the best governor in America, Henry Dargan McMaster. Governor McMaster. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, am too, am happy to be here, and I think I can say without fear of contradiction uh, that there are 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians who are glad we are here today to celebrate this landmark legislation. Everything that has been said so far is true. South Carolina is about as close to a perfect state as you can get if we are not perfect in all of our capacities, and this bill, this law is about as close to perfect as you can get in all of its different provisions. They were needed, they are here, and once again, it makes the people of South Carolina proud of our state and proud and have confidence in our people. I think we can agree that South Carolinians should be able to cast their ballots freely and with confidence, knowing that they will be properly counted and reported. Unfortunately, through error, irregularities, accident, and even fraud, that confidence is sometimes destroyed. And candidates and their supporters and their contributors and those, those people, the, the people of the state who work for candidates, work for issues, they are concerned about a lot of things. Did they, did they call enough people? Did they go talk to the right people? Have they said the right things at the meetings? Have they made their positions clear? Have, have they behaved as they are supposed to, as their mom and daddy told them to? The, the last thing they need to be worrying about is whether the votes are going to get counted right. That's the last thing. And uh, because of this law, that's one thing they will not have to worry about in South Carolina. Numerous... Numerous studies show that many Americans are losing faith in elections, especially after the elections of 2020 and all those controversies, as has been mentioned. As we in South Carolina enter another political season, our number one priority must be to protect our, the integrity of our elections. When I was a U.S. attorney in the Reagan administration, we convicted more than 30 people, prominent people, office holders, for election fraud in South Carolina, the Heritage Foundation maintains an election fraud database that documents 1,311 cases of voter fraud across the country in 40 years since then, resulting in more than 1,100 convictions. Now, we know more fraud than that took place. We suspect more took, took place, but those are actual numbers based on convictions. During the 2020 elections, court and election officials in many states implemented a variety of measures in response to the COVID-19 concerns. The public scrutiny that followed revealed the need for improvement in election processes, including our own. As has been mentioned, we defended our elections and were successful in court, but now is the time to finish the job. 
So today, I will sign into ceremonially the bipartisan election integrity bill, which, as has been mentioned, makes it easier to vote and harder to cheat in South Carolina. Jay Lucas, our Speaker of the House, presented us with two excellent bills, both of which have been incorporated into the bill I'm signing today. The Speaker's bills were based on the simple and often violated premise that election officials in each county should apply their election rules in precisely the same uniform way in every county. Each voter in each county must be treated exactly like every other voter in every other county, and the voting process must be completely secure and reliable. In addition, the bill prohibits drop boxes, requires post-election audits, which are very valuable, prohibits county election commissions from accepting dark money. We had over $5 million of dark money that was put in our election processes here through the county election commissions from private corporations like Facebook to help conduct elections and requires all election commissioners to fall under the authority of the state election commission, ensuring that each county, each county conducts elections by the same rules and the same procedures, and it can be fixed if they don't. This was a bipartisan bill that limits the excuses for mail-in absentee ballots, establishes a standard two-week early voting period in multiple areas in each county, requires the last four digits of a voter's social security number on the mail-in absentee ballot, requires an address associated with mail-in absentee ballot witness signature, and stops ballot harvesting, as we have seen around the country, by prohibiting someone from witnessing more than 10 ballots or requesting more than five ballots. Also, my executive budget proposed and the House Senate budgets have funded the creation of a new election integrity and compliance audit program at the State Election Commission. Teams of auditors, auditors working for the state will conduct regular and routine examinations to confirm the integrity of elections conducted on the state and local level. So this much needed oversight will enhance accountability at the State Election Commission and safeguard the voting process against the threat of fraud, which if left unchecked, could do permanent damage to our Republican form of government. A lot of people worked very hard and expressed themselves very clearly and very strongly. There's a lot of give and take in the legislative process. You know, we were pleased in my office to meet with men and women standing here uh, numerous times to discuss what needs to be done, what can be done. And I believe that this, this bill, which we have produced, which is now the law in South Carolina, as has been mentioned, is the best in the nation. And I think that is only suitable. Uh, I want to mention Josh Kimbrell worked hard on forming the, the compromise in some areas. Also, the, the, the speaker, uh, Senator Campson, the new speaker, it, it, this was a quite an interesting and very productive exercise. And it, I believe it was your government at work uh, at its best. And as it says, this is the best election law in the United States, and that is only fitting because this is the best state in the United States <laughs> with the best people in the United States. And thank you. And now, and now we will go to the table and do our signing ceremonial, of course.